everybody welcome to another video we start this one off in Banstead as you can see I've got this funny looking thing in front of me and you realize I've got a car or something in front of me yeah so there's no point in getting that close to me and obviously you can hear me talking about a car behind me that's obviously got very good reflexes because it wants to be this close to me now I know some of you might be saying well that's not that bad well, it is when you look in your mirror, the camera doesn't do these things justice. Basically, when you look in your mirror, it looks a lot closer than what it does on this camera. I can tell you that. Now, the thing is, the point I'm trying to make here is, what is the point of actually getting that close? You've seen that contraption in front of me. You know I can't go anywhere. But she's even going to get even closer. I mean, surely she must be able to see round me to see that there's nothing I can do. I can't speed up. And let me tell you something, I would never speed up for someone like this. I would go even slower. Now, we're going to go into a 20 mile an hour speed limit now. And we're approaching a roundabout. I'm going straight on. She's turning left. But you would never know that she's turning left because she doesn't know how to use her indicators yet. Just like she doesn't know how to use that pedal to the left hand side of the gas pedal. Now, I've watched a lot of films in my time where if you're going to be up to no good, it's very important to blend in. So you just don't stand out from the crowd. Unlike this car in front, it's obviously covering up its number plate. It doesn't want to pay the ULEZ or it's going to be speeding, don't want to be caught on any cameras or it's going to be used as a getaway car. For whatever reason he's done it, it just doesn't blend in and you stick out like a sore thumb. For whatever the reason they've done that, you would be better off in taking it off completely. And if you did get stopped by the police, you could just say, oh, it fell off or someone's nicked it. We're on the good old M25 again. And it's the A3 turn off yet again. And I'm just going to pause it here because we're going to play a guessing game as to which make of car is going to leave it so late to get into the slip road that they go over the solid white lines. And just to help you out here, the car is not in shot at the moment. No guessing to where you're going. And as I've said in these clips before, you can always spot them a mile off that lime green piece of shit there. It's obviously going into the slip road because there's no way it would leave that gap in front of it otherwise. But that isn't the car that we're talking about. That's still to come. And the thing you've always got to bear in mind with these clips is the signage. The signage goes back for over a mile telling you what lane you need to be in to go onto the A3. But these people, well, these people know that they're going on the A3. They're just not prepared to queue. Have you got to make a model yet? There it is. A Burke in the Merc. If you had a Burke in the Merc, you win fuck all. Let's face it, it was either going to be a Mercedes, an Audi or a Range Rover. Which one did you have? Now we've got two idiots in one clip here. And a couple of questions at the same time. As you can see, I'm pulling up at these traffic lights here. And we're looking at that car there. It's got nothing in its way. There's nothing in its view. There's no tree, no fence, no parked cars or anything. It can see straight at me. So my question is, why does it have to pull out so far? Why? And well, obviously it's a BMW and they think they're in the road. But other than that, why? And the second part of the question is, why is this car not in its lane? Why does it need two lanes to turn right? It's stopping three cars behind it. That you don't have to obviously i know the answer to that one it's a professional driver now in this clip i'm gonna have to pause it and zoom in a bit because it doesn't really show it as you can see this car in front of me is already braking because it can see that car that is completely on the wrong side of the road even now it's there look there's the side of the road that it should be on it's over the hatch markings but it was completely on the wrong side of the road and when I looked at the driver, she wasn't even looking at the road. She was chatting with her kids. Get over your side, silly bitch. Stop fucking talking to someone in your car. Come on. Now in this clip, I'm going to be pulling over to the left-hand side. So 
I kindly let this woman cross the road. Shame this thing doesn't though. Don't expect anything different, do you, from them? And again, because the pedestrian had started to cross, it had full priority over that bike as well. Now another subject that keeps coming up on the channel is when do you do a three-point turn or a turn in the road or a U-turn? We're looking at the red van up there in front. You obviously don't fucking do it there. Holding up the whole road, both sides, to do a U-turn there. I mean, just count the amount of cars that this guy, this numpty, has affected. Just doing a U-turn there. Look how many cars that have to wait because of that idiot. <coughs> now, in this clip, it's just someone that goes for a red light. You can just about see the traffic lights over there. And you can see him change to amber and then to red. I'll pause it when it goes to red light now. This car is a long way from them stop lines. Doesn't stop him going through the red light though. Had plenty of time to stop, surely. Now in this clip, I'm just going to show you the road first of all. It's like a surface road that goes round a block of flats. Oh, oh you know, they're not called block of flats no more, are they? They're called affordable apartments, aren't they? Yeah. Well, that road there that goes off to the back of a hotel as well. Now, what we're looking at here, once I park up, is that shutter. Now, there's about four cars that come out of there, and they're all going to be turning left. Just look how many of them actually look to the right before pulling out. They obviously know that there's a road there that goes round the back of the affordable apartments. Now, this guy, he does have a little look, but he's already looking at his phone. You can see that his head's right the way down, and then he mounts the pavement. This one here, that's not a look across to the right hand side to me, that's a little glance. Next one, doesn't look at all. Now this guy, I think he does look, but because of the reflection and everything, it's very hard to see if he actually looked, but I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt and say that he did. Now I'm going to speed it up here now because the shutter does go down again and then it goes back up when another car comes and the final one this one look at that looking left the whole time there's a little bit of a clue on the floor them give way lines there as well so just round the corner from there this junction is normally on the channel just for the people crossing the road at them lights and there's a big long queue in this inside lane here. And the reason for that is because this lane is the only lane that goes straight on. Anything to my right hand side goes right. And this is where this merge and turn use the whole of the road bollocks comes into effect here. Because this isn't a merge and turn. This guy here is nothing but a queue jumper. He got time to get in there behind me. But no, you see him have a little hesitation bit there. Because... There's a big long queue and he doesn't want to sit in the big long queue. There is no merging turn nonsense here. A lot of people get this merging turn use the whole of the road scenario thing up as an excuse to queue jump. And that is basically what he is doing. He is in a right turn only lane. It's simple as that. Not to be mixed up with a merging turn where two lanes go into one normally either from the left or from the right and as you can see on the floor it's a clearly a right turn only and he's shot off like a bat out of hell we're on the good old m25 for this one at the m23 junction i'm taking the m23 so is this car on the outside lane gonna cut right across everyone but there are two slip roads here so he's got away with it there he's doing Technically, I guess nothing wrong here because he's just entering the other slip road. Uh, he rode his luck a little bit for me though, to be honest, because he doesn't know what was in front of him there. But he does know what's in front of him now. It's an Audi that's driving too slow. So what do you do? Just go straight across the solid white lines. Now we're looking at the Audi now. That is obviously going too slow for the outside lane. You can't see it on camera, but it's fiddling about with something in the car. And then, obviously, it hits the brakes. Um, my eyesight is quite good, actually, but I can't see anything in front of it that it needed to hit the brakes for. Now, normally on my clips, I can normally come up with some sort of reasoning to why people do things. 
I can't on this one because stupidity is very hard to explain. He's obviously not the sharpest tool in his toolbox because why the hell would you leave your door open, roadside and load from the other side of your van as well? Nothing makes sense. It's stupidity in a nutshell. It really is. Why? Is it open? Why is your fucking door open? Now in this next clip, we're coming up to that roundabout where I need my crash investigator team on the case again. Something's happened here. I can't work it out myself, I'm afraid. As you can see, over to the right hand side there, there is a car with police tape on it. And just down there, there is another car that's gone straight through these railings and decided to park on the grass. Now, I'm assuming that they have both hit each other one in some shape or form. When we get a little bit closer, the clues start to add up though, a little bit anyway. There it is, it's all smashed up in the fence. And can you see it? Yes, the yellow circle of death. That's probably got something to do with the accident. So I need my investigating team on this one because I can't work out what's happened there. When we go to the rear camera here, I can't see any damage to this first car here that's parked there to the left hand side. I cannot see any damage to it at all. And it's a long way away from this car that's gone into the fence. I mean, that's a, that's a bit of a distance there. And there's the old yellow circle of death. And yes, before anyone says anything, I have got one of them yellow circles of death in my car. But these numpties are making me pay a fucking fortune in insurance keeps smashing every five minutes. But I suppose, look on the bright side, they didn't go through the fence here where they normally go through, straight into the ponds. They've gone a little bit further down the road. Anyway, I should actually do a video on life as a private hire driver in London. Yeah how you get your license in and all that sort of stuff it is comical maybe that's for another time but getting back to this one how the hell has that gone in there backwards how is it facing that way that's another one crash investigator team you're on the case i'll pass it over to you let us know in the comments down below and the one thing you really have to consider here it's a 20 mile an hour speed limit so how the hell do you do that much damage doing 20 yeah so we're getting back to this junction again, where I thought at first that this guy was a private hire driver as well. The car definitely looks like it has been. Look at all them dents and scratches and everything else on it. I think the car is too old to be a private hire car now, but the driver still drives like a private hire driver. The car is held together with sticky tape and filler. You can't really see it that well, but the back of bumper there is held on with some sort of filler in that gap. So that car's been through the mill and back. So I reckon it definitely has been a private hire vehicle. But as I say, when they get to 10 years old, they can no longer be a private hire vehicle. But this guy definitely drives like a private hire driver because he's in a right turn only lane. And as you all know, he's not turning right. He's gonna cut straight across. And it is a 20 mile an hour speed limit and he's going well over that. So a little bit of a change in the weather now, and it's the final clip of this uh, episode. Do we call them episodes? I don't know. As you can see, the lights up in front are turning amber, and they've gone red, and there's an Audi to the right-hand side of it. That's a red light. Red, red's just a colour to them. And the thing is, when you go to the rear camera, it's gone for a red light to get where? To join that traffic. It doesn't make any sense. Where's an Audi? Yeah, always an Audi. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.